So I'm not going to lie to you. I almost forgot that Chucky was coming back this week. I happened to see it being recorded on my DVR, and I said to myself, once again, it's my time to shine. Let's discuss. I watched so you don't have to. <laughs> so it's been a little while since I've talked about anything Chucky related. And since that time, we've had an announcement that there is a new Chucky film on the way from Don Mancini himself. To which anyone with any level of standards would respond, you lost me at Don Mancini. Now, for anyone who's been paying attention, just the fact that I said something like that should tell you a lot. I've always been an advocate for a property's original creator to be involved when new projects are in the works. But Don Mancini is the one rare instance where I'd say get him as far away from Chucky as humanly possible. Anybody care about what I want? I do. Shut up. Get out. Because we are literally talking about a guy who ruined his own creation, turning it into a parody of itself using cringe storytelling and self-insert characters. And how do I know that? Well, I've been watching the Chucky TV series for three seasons now. That's all the information I need to come to the conclusion that I do not need a new Chucky film from Don Mancini. So I was concerned watching this new episode that I would be lost because a lot of this show kind of goes in one ear and out the other. It's mostly pretty forgettable. But almost immediately, it all came screaming back when two of the most annoying characters in the history of television graced my screen again. And of course, I'm talking about Lexi and Jake. It took Lexi a matter of minutes to be completely unlikable again, when she actually had the nerve to blame Grant for her betrayal. And this is a character that I'm supposed to root for? This is a character that I'm supposed to be invested in her journey to find her sister? I don't care! Someone who manipulates a guy to get what she wants, and then calls him soft when he writes her off. Here's a thought, maybe he's not soft, maybe you're just a b It's kind of like they wrote Lexi to be the equivalent of an internet troll. Basically, she starts some shit, and then she plays the victim when she gets some pushback. And Grant, being the dumbass that he actually is, forgives her by the end of the episode. Absolutely zero consequences for a character like Lexi, who deserves all of them. And then we had the Jake and Devin road trip where they visit Chucky's voodoo doctor so they can get some information about how to kill him permanently. And the doctor tells them, well, he's already dying, so basically if you just wait around a little bit, all of your problems will go away. They then proceed to have the most awkward scene of pillow talk and foreplay that I've ever seen put on film. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? At least if you're going to fill this show up with teen melodrama and a teen love story, is it too much to ask to write better dialogue and characters? So after their little getaway, Devin being the only intelligent character on this show, suggests that they leave this BS behind. But Jake being a character that consistently makes the worst decisions possible, suggests that they continue their fight against Chucky because they are the final girls of this story. Well, Jake, I hate to break it to you, but you and Devin are no Sidney Prescott or Laurie Strode. And what happens if Devin gets killed this time around? Jake is going to wish, once again, that he wasn't so stupid. What a idiot! Oh, what a loser! As far as Chucky goes, because of his situation, he's lost the will to live, and he's lost his passion for killing. I actually called it before it happened that they were going to somehow turn this into a dick joke, and not but a few minutes later, Chucky was already talking about not being able to get it up. Predictable as can be. One thing that I did agree with about this episode was the shots that Chucky was sending towards Megan. Yes, I say kill me now every time I see that stupid ass viral dance video as well. I've heard rumors of a crossover between the two characters, and all it made me think about is what happened when one storm meets another storm. Both of these characters are being written to appease social media crowds, so I guess it would make sense, but it will surely end up being as cringe as you could possibly imagine. There's also a brief phone conversation between Chucky and Tiffany, who is currently in prison, and they conveniently put their differences aside for a moment, which is strange considering everything they've went through, just long enough so Tiffany can give Chucky a pep talk. 
telling him that if he's going to go out, he needs to go out in a blaze and take as many people as he can with him. This leads to him killing the president, kind of anticlimactically, and stealing his clearance codes for nukes, I guess. Great, so now we're going to have Jake, Devin, and Lexi putting an end to a possible nuclear holocaust, I guess. And why did we waste so much time in this episode of the president seeing visions of his son when that storyline goes absolutely nowhere? In fact, did we really need the ghost element at all, considering all the shit that's already stuffed into this series? I still, for the life of me, can't figure out why so many people feel compelled to defend this show? And telling me that it's supposed to be cheesy and quirky is not a good response. I will stand on the hill that Chucky was always better as a character when he was scary and more intimidating and even more manipulating. To me, Child's Play 1 and 2 Chucky is still the sweet spot. I like it a lot. This cult of Chucky or seed of Chucky or whatever Chucky we are getting right now is not for me. It's pretty bad when that damn remake that everyone seemed to hate so much is actually better than anything we're getting from Chucky's original creator right now. <gasps> you lit- Hello? Hey, yeah, it's me. Man baby? How did you get this number? Yeah, yeah, shut up. Listen, I have a proposition for you. Oh, really? Are you going to admit defeat? and delete all your social media accounts, and delete your YouTube channel? No, but I'm willing to call a truce. A truce? <laughs> Don't bet on it, incel. Why would I call a truce when I'm so close to canceling you for good? Okay, you're not, but listen, I have an idea, and I think if you're willing to listen, it's going to benefit both of us. <sighs> Fine, I'll text you the address to my new lair. This better be good, and you better bring me a soy latte to sweeten the deal. Yeah, I'll get right on it. Y'all be cool. Right on.